When you see the words mushrooms and cognition, what do you think? For many people, it's lion's mane, and rightly so. Lion's mane's a fantastic mushroom for cognition. But many of us may not be aware that the consumption of edible mushrooms, so think agaragus and shiitake and, and oyster mushrooms, the consumption of these mushrooms on a regular basis is also associated with significant improvements in cognitive function. And the data that we can quote to support this is, is really quite compelling. There's at least 10 different studies that have been done. And these studies come to the conclusion that just one serve of mushroom per week, and the, the study that, that was the most notable in this area, people uh, were observed over a period of um, 18 years. There were, there were 30,000 of them in the study. And they had seven different types of cognitive tests applied to them. So just one serve of mushroom a week improved cognitive performance in healthy people. So one serve is about 15 grams, which is about half an ounce fresh, which is about one and a half grams dry, which is three 500 milligram capsules, which is arguably a very, very low dose. In other studies, uh, it showed that as the serving size increased, uh, cognitive function improves and there's less challenge. So just two serves a week can support cognitive challenges in aging people. And when you get up to seven, eight or nine serves a week, there's a, a reduction of about 75 to 80% uh, in the risk associated with age-related cognitive challenge. So it's really impressive data. And the, you know, the, the take home message is, we just got to eat mushrooms more often and more regularly to get these cognitive benefits. But the big question that arises from that data is just how is it possible? What is it in a mushroom at such a low dose that could um, have these benefits? And there's a couple of constituents in mushrooms that are plausible. So beta-glucans are known for their immunomodulatory action, and they also have impacts on cognitive function, but only at much higher doses or serving sizes. So it's plausible, but it's not likely because of the very, very low dose. We know that the secondary metabolites from lion's mane play a role in cognition, but none of these culinary mushrooms contain such secondary metabolites. So you know, the white button or the shiitake or the oyster mushroom just don't have those types of constituents. So what could it be? Um, the answer is ergotheanine. And ergotheanine is the most important antioxidant that the least number of people know about. It's only relatively a recent discovery. And scientists are only just in the last 10 years starting to hone in just on how important it is. So we're getting ahead of the curve here and drawing attention to this really important molecule before it has kind of penetrated um, you know, the mass consciousness. And ergotheanine can explain these uh, cognitive associations because humans need ergotheanine in very small quantities to be optimally healthy as we age. And ergotheanine is a type of antioxidant. And it's not a, an antioxidant all of the time. It's got this adaptive capacity where it, it only gets recruited to become an antioxidant uh, when the conditions become a little bit stressful. When the conditions aren't stressful, it doesn't have this antioxidant action. And that confers on it very highly specific activity. And it also makes it very safe. So it can never become a problem. And you can never take too much ergotheanine. It's incredibly safe. The more you can take, um, the better it will be. So antioxidant describes its activity, but its kind of main function in, this, in the body is to maintain the health and protection of just about all of the cells that make up um, us as humans. So it's necessary to, to support the cells in the eye to keep the eye healthy. It's necessary in the liver to keep the liver healthy. And it's definitely necessary in the brain to uh, ensure that the brain functions smoothly. So it's, a, it's an underrated nutrient and it almost, almost makes the definition of a vitamin. And Bruce Ames, uh, who's the author of this publication here, suggests that it should be called vitamin L, where L stands for longevity. So where does ergotheanine come from then? Um, it's, a, 
it's major it's, it's mainly produced by fungi and there's fungi in the soil and there's also soil bacteria that make it so plants have some ergotheanine in it even though the plants don't make it but the the level of ergotheanine that we get from consuming a plants more than a hundred times less than what we get from consuming a mushroom so a mushroom is the primary source of this important nutrient so my recommendation is to consume mushrooms on a regular basis so you get your levels of ergotheanine but not everybody can do that um, not everybody cooks not everybody likes mushrooms and even the most avid mushroom consumers um, fall in and out of favor of mushrooms so i think it makes great sense to have a supplement of uh, of ergotheanine from a mushroom that you can take on a daily basis as a supplement to the diet and the golden oyster, the Pleurota citrinopolitis, um, is, the, is the number one choice uh, because it is a powerhouse of ergotheanine production. From a commercial point of view, uh, it's, it's relatively easy to grow. You don't see it as a commercial mushroom for um, culinary use because it's quite fragile, um, whereas other, other oyster mushrooms are less fragile and they're much more common. But oyster mushrooms in general are very high producers of this stuff. So Real Mushrooms has got a product called Ergo Plus, and Ergo Plus contains 500 milligrams of golden oyster, which is delivering approximately two and a half to five milligrams of ergotheanine. And then it's also got five milligrams of ergotheanine from yeast, which naturally, which can naturally produce ergotheanine. So just one of these capsules per day uh, for a healthy person across the course of the lifespan gives insurance to ensure that there will be, um, you know, health throughout the lifespan that there'll be um, less age associated challenges. So that's a very, very simple lifestyle uh, factor to build into your daily routine. But if we were to look at cognition specifically, then in healthy people to enhance their cognitive function, you could take one or two capsules to do that. And if there are some cognitive challenges in uh, in people that are aging, then more ergotheanine is better. And I'd recommend three or four capsules. And in that category of having cognitive challenge, I would recommend combining it with real mushrooms, lion's mane. So ergotheanine, it's not a fad. Um, it's, a, it's a lifestyle choice that we all need to get on board with. So it'd be silly for me to say you could just do all of the exercise that you need uh, in one month um, and not do any more exercise in that year and then just repeat that pattern. It doesn't work like that, does it? You've got to do exercise regularly to get the benefits. It'd be silly to say you could have just a good diet one month out of the year, eat really clean and then have the rest of the year off. It's just absurd. So it's the same uh, with ergotheanine. You can't just sporadically take doses of it. Humans have got a need for it. So we have to create a lifestyle choice out of it. We need to be doing it on a regular basis. So think of it as an insurance policy against age related health challenges. And I recommend getting started and turning it into a routine and just keep it going throughout your life. So get onto the internet, place your order today and get started on your ergotheanine journey.